Hello friends, Amy R here with Perry Paper and Ink with a couple of mini slimline flat shaker cards. So, I started off with this Studio Caudia Gladiolas stamp set. I've had this sitting here for like a couple weeks now. Just It's just been literally like sitting right beside me. <laughs> so, I grabbed a bunch of pieces of Simon's Smooth White cardstock cardstock of my Misty and I am stamping this Gladiolus image with um, intense black ink so alcohol marker friendly ink all of them I'm stamping twice to get a crisp black image um, I let this ink dry and or I do heat set it I do this with all any um, alcohol friendly inks um, if you're stamping them especially if you're stamping them more than once I've mentioned this in other videos you have like ink sitting on top of ink it takes longer to dry. People have asked in various videos about um, like why their ink is smearing when they're coloring with uh, alcohol-based markers, etc. Let it dry. Either let it dry or even the best option, heat set it. It just, the ink hasn't had enough time to dry. And with that caveat though, um, certain markers, certain colors, specifically like yellows, regardless, doesn't matter what brand, I color with a yellow. Yellow is just, even like with stamping, yellow is just its own little beast in a sense. Um, I've talked about red pigments, red colorants, that sort of a thing, and how like a red just has a mind of its own and likes to get everywhere. That's a red. But when it comes to yellow, yellow has its own little funny quirks. And the biggest one is it likes to, it'll pick up other colors, it'll smear things, etc. So... When it comes to coloring, regardless whether I'm using yellows or anything, I color generally like up to the lines of everything. You kind of like I've sped this up. I'm using my Spectrum Noir tri-blend markers. Still having fun with them. Still enjoying them. Still love my Copics. Just I, I enjoy the 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 biggest thing I enjoy with the Spectrum Noir tri-blends is just the not needing to think and the convenience. You know, I grab one marker. I have three shades. So that's what I did. Anyway, back to the actual coloring. Um, you see when I color, I color like up to the lines. I'm not like scribbling right across everything I stamped. I never do that. It's just force of habit. And that also just eliminates pretty much any chance of ink smearing because I'm not scribbling my markers on top of the stamped image. So yeah. It's some and some stamping inks are not compatible, but you know, they will say with the ink whether or not it is. Simon's Intense Black Ink is one of them, and this is the one I've been using for I don't even know how many years now. So, all that said, I yeah, use my Spectrum Noir tri blends. Um, all of the actual little florals, I'm using the bullet um, markers, and I've said this in the other videos. I do prefer the brush tips with any marker, I just I prefer. The brush tips bullet nibs just annoy me <laughs> on principle but the colors are pretty and I make them work for me it's just I'm just doing it you know I did rainbow colors for all of these um, I will also link to my playlist at the end of this video where I have all the other videos I've done so far using like coloring with these markers and I'll just keep adding to it as I use them and um, like I always say like are these compatible, like comparable, I should say, to Copics? No, Copics are kind of in their own sphere. There have there has yet to be a marker that like genuinely would be, you know, a full on running contender. There's a few other brands out there that are getting close, but even then. However, and did and again, did I need did I need to get the tri blends? No. <laughs> I like I just like having coloring mediums I like experimenting with them I like trying out new ones for, it's just that's just something that I genuinely enjoy so all of these I did my typical like I just went with the darkest shade to the medium shade to the lightest shade in each um like marker this blue one was really interesting this is the true blue blend the lightest color is like almost almost non-existent it's like the palest blue love it love it and I missed spots on this like top flower I missed coloring the base I went back and did that afterwards because I wasn't paying attention so you see that in the finished um, images so I did like I said, a rainbow color so I did like yellow and a coral a pink 
an aqua blue, a blue, and a purple, because gladiolas do come in like pretty much every color. I love gladiolas. I want, I would love to fill my yard with them. They're a pain in the butt. I don't know how it works in other climates, but up here you have to dig them up, like dig the bulbs up every fall and store them in like cold storage, all the stuff. And I just, no. <laughs> Once fall rolls around, I'm done with all of the anything. But every time I see gladiola bulbs for sale, I'm like, oh, they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Yeah. In a perfect world, I'd have a gardener, you know, so I could just enjoy the flowers and they could do the, <laughs> they could do the digging up and storing of things. But anywho, anywho, I did all the coloring. I die cut them with um, the coordinating wafer die. And then for my card bases, I'm using that same smooth white cardstock. And I cut for the card bases, I cut my pieces to six and a quarter by six and a half inches. Um, I talked about this in a recent video. That's why I have this washi tape on my guillotine trimmer. The washi tape, the edge of it marks the six and a quarter measurement. And then there's a Sharpie line on the washi tape that marks the six and a half inch measurement. And that's specifically for me to be able to quickly measure and make mini slimline card bases. So after I'd cut my two card bases, stick those in my little score buddy, and I will score this at three and a quarter inches. So these will be three and a quarter by six and a quarter inch mini slimline cards. And then I cut um, from what was remaining, I cut panels that will be my actual flat shakers that are just under three inches by six inches. And then the remaining scraps I save because I use them for, you know, die cuts and all the things. So set all those aside. And um, after I finish scoring my card bases, I'm going to put these back into my Misty. And I'm going to stamp that Gladiolus image onto the inside of both of these cards. And I just pulled out um, Simon's flannel ink. Just a nice light gray ink. Just something light and neutral. So I've got the inside of my card in my Misty, lined up the stamp, and then I'll ink that up with that flannel ink. And then I chose a little companion sentiment from the Studio Cadia Simply High stamp set. <laughs> and there's a bunch of little like sentiments in there. So I picked one that I wanted to use for these cards and then lined that up onto the inside of the card. And then I'll ink that up uh, with the VersaVine Claire Nocturne ink and do that on both card bases and then um after i did that i wanted hot foil there is the high hot foil plate from studio cadia it's the same size as the um little stamp set so you could like just heat emboss that word you know with gold embossing powder that would work too but if i'm if i got the hot foil plate i'm gonna use it because it's beautiful so i have my spellbinders glimmer hot foil machine i had turned it on let it heat up so the green light's on and everything's ready to go. I trim down my foil. This is gold glimmer foil, kind of my go-to. I just, I love it. I always reach for gold. You can never have too much. <laughs> and then my other thing is I like taping everything down. I find that just works. It works so well. So I use Spellbinders really narrow tape. I'll have a link as always to everything. But I had my cardstock, which was Simon's Smooth White cardstock. I had the foil with the pretty side of the foil facing the pretty side of the plate. Taped everything down, stuck it in the Glimmer Hot Foil machine, press the timer button. It takes about a minute for every, like, to heat up the plate completely. And then I ran that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die machine, which applies the pressure. Pulled that out, removed it. I have my fabulously hot foiled sentiment and then I just repeat the process a second time to get a second one because I just decided it's like while I've got everything out why not make more than one card so exact same procedure my cardstock I had the foil with the pretty side basically cardstock foil pretty side up hot foil plate pretty side facing the foil taped them together Put, press the timer my brain stopped for a second there press the timer let that go off ran it through my die cut machine remove the hot foil plate and the foil and I have a hot foil sentiment the leftover foil I actually put back in the packaging with the the high hot foil plate because if down the road if I want to do the reverse foiling I've shown that in other videos I can do that I just wasn't in the mood to do that today so I just put it with the packaging so the next time I grab this hot foil plate it's like ooh, I can just reverse hot foil that etc so to make these flat shaker cards again 
I will link to my flat shaker playlist. I have done many. I, I don't, I've lost track of how many videos. There's a ton in there. Uh, flat shaker card videos using a variety of products, all different sorts of things. Today I'm using these little Studio Cadia mini slimline shaker pockets. They have different sizes of these. I did a video not too long ago using the A2 size, I think. And with the Studio Cadia ones, you just have to remember it. There's a, there's a film on them that you need to remove. You can't even really see it but you notice it once you've removed it. So a lot of times I'll just take my like my little die pick like or the edge of my scissors and just kind of scrape along one of the flaps where you can't see until the film um, pulls up and then I can just pull it off and it's good to go. And then you just use your adhesive of choice to adhere it to the panel. So with these mini slimline, that's what I said about a uh, three inch by six inch piece, but I cut mine slightly smaller than that, like just, just a hair smaller so that everything lays a little flatter. And then I use score tape to adhere the little flaps. You want a good, strong adhesive. You adhere three sides, leave the fourth side open so you can add your little shaker bits. And for that, I used some gold foil discs and some pastel rainbow sequins. So once I had enough in there or was happy with it, sealed off the fourth side. I've got my little shaker element. The nice thing about little panels like this is because they're they're sturdier than like the packaging I've used in a ton of videos as well. So things shake really, really well. Again, it's just personal preference. It's fun to try all the different things. And yeah, I'll have links to these little these little panels. She's got A2, there's mini slimline and slimline size. I can't remember if I've used, have I done, I'm sure I have done slimline flat shakers. I'm sure they're in the playlist. <laughs> I've done so many. I can't even remember anymore. Anyway, after I had assembled my flat shakers to adhere these die cut gladiolas images, I am again using score tape. You want to use a good, strong adhesive for something like this, either, you know, score tape, red line tape, um, terrific tape foam adhesive would also work really well if you do want to like add extra dimension I just use a score tape this just works the best in my opinion you can use liquid adhesives but honestly one it gets a little finicky and I only use liquid when I absolutely have to um, and usually for smaller elements because sometimes it just likes to be finicky so then for the actual um, hot foil sentiment, I had die cut it with the um, Simply High Coordinating Wafer Die. It works for the hot foil and it also works for the stamp set. And then to adhere this, I pulled out uh, the Studio Cadia. This is their double-sided foam strips. This is the thin one. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick, so it's just nice and thin. And then they have one that's an eighth of an inch thick. The thing with this is it has this red line... Um, backer on it but it's not your typical red line backer as you can see I haven't removed it and it remains flexible I have no foam adhesive that I've ever come across that this backer is flexible usually you have to remove the backer and then you can you know manipulate the foam I've shown that in a bunch of videos this stuff you don't need to remove the backer it's it's weird but I like it <laughs> so you've got like thinner strips and wider strips in this thinner thickness in a pack and yeah I was able to manipulate it all the way around and then just to remove it just to like lift up a corner I just use my die uh, release tool again edge of scissors works anything just to kind of lift up that little corner because some foam tapes they like to get finicky and they don't want to release but once you get a corner up you're good to go so got that removed and then that I can pop into place right on top of these um gladiolas and then the foam also sticks to the the uh, shaker element everything so it ain't going anywhere and it also doesn't add a ton of bulk because I went with a thinner foam and then to adhere these shaker panels to the card bases I use score tape again good strong adhesive holding everything down ain't nothing going anywhere nothing's falling apart life is great so put that on the back of these panels and then stuck these to the card bases and the card bases, since they're just slightly larger, just kind of frames the panels, you know, just a little bit. And then again, I repeated the process with the second card. Once that was done, I paired these with a couple of mini slimline envelopes from Simon. And that finished them off. And then I've got my little, my little flat shaker cards with their little gladiolas. And 
you know, I can just sit here and shake these all day. <laughs> and hot foil sentiment and just, yeah, rainbow, shiny gold shaker, all the fun things as always. And like I said, I will have links to those playlists at the end of this video. And then below the video in the description box, I'll link to my blog post. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to everything I showed here so you can find it all. If you are interested, just check that out below. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, for commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.